Hello, am I speaking to someone who is worried today? Perhaps you're worried about the state of our nation, the economy, the health service, etc. Or perhaps it's about the continuing conflict in Ukraine and uh, its potential for further escalation. Maybe you're worried about the cost of living and how you're going to pay your next bill. Or perhaps your concern is the awful stories that keep coming up on the news about the horrific murders of school children and the devastation that brings to families. Have some of these things become a burden to you, weigh, weighing you down, making you anxious? Do you see no prospect of relief from all the bad news? Do you wonder where to turn? You probably expect me to recommend turning to the Bible and to God and to Jesus Christ. And if that's the case, I'm not going to disappoint you. Uh, because it is in the Bible, in God and specifically in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that you can find relief. I'm going to read you a verse found towards the end of Matthew chapter 11. It's an invitation given by Jesus Christ. He said this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is offering true rest, a true relief to those who come to him. Let's think about two questions then. First, to whom is that rest or relief offered? Listen again to Christ's words. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Christ offers this relief to those who are weighed down, to those who are burdened, to those who are worried, those who are anxious. Now, I just need to say this. Uh, the people to whom Jesus was speaking were not necessarily physically tired and they were not humping large physical loads around. Perhaps that's obvious. But nor were they struggling to pay their taxes or worried about law and order in their country. At least some of them may have been, uh, but that wasn't what Jesus was thinking about when he gave his invitation. No, he was thinking about a deep spiritual need they had. First and foremost, these people needed to really know God. But their religious leaders, instead of helping them along that path, had been putting them under a whole lot of pressure. They'd introduced hundreds of rules that were impossible to keep and just weighed them down. What Jesus was offering was to set them free from all those burdens, to bring them relief from all that anxiety. And for us, it's not that Christ is not interested in every difficulty we have in our lives, every cause for concern. He is. But first and foremost, he wants us to really know God. You see, God made us for relationship with him. But the first man, Adam, despite being placed in a perfect environment, rebelled against God. Uh, he sinned and we've all inherited his sinful nature. Uh, we're flawed creatures in our actions, our words and even our thoughts. And as a result, we're at a distance from a holy God. The Bible says your sins have cut you off from God. There's a part of us that cries out for connection with him, but we're hopeless to deal with the situation. Further than that, if God's holiness prevents us from relationship with him, his justice demands that a suitable price be paid for our wrongs, our sins. The Bible tells us what that price is. It says the wages of sin is death. I have to say that while you and I may have many very real concerns and worries, our deepest need is a spiritual one. That ought to be our greatest burden and that is the one that Christ offers true relief from. Much as the religious leaders of that day didn't help, religion isn't going to help us. The suggestion that a nice mix of good deeds, religion and superstition will set us on the right track is a lie from the devil. Christ alone is the answer. His words come right down the centuries to 2022. No religion or philosophy and no other person can genuinely offer such relief. Second then, how is Christ able to provide this rest, this relief? As the perfect holy son of God, Christ has perfectly kept God's law. He owed no debt at all. But he came to earth to pay that debt on behalf of others. In his own words, he came to give his life as a ransom for many. He became that ultimate sacrifice. He gave himself. He laid down his own life on a cross for the sin of the world. How can we be sure? Listen to his words again. I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. And that's exactly what happened. He died, but he rose again on the third day. And in the Bible's words, he's able to save completely those who come to God through him. 
he lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. To such people, he doesn't offer a trouble-free life, but he offers relief from the spiritual burden of the debt that sin produces. He offers forgiveness, salvation and peace with God, and he promises his own presence to give strength to endure all the trying circumstances, all the worries and concerns that life throws at them. Will you confess your sin to God and take up Christ's offer of rest, relief, by trusting your life to him and allowing him to become Lord, to take control? He says, come to me and I will give you rest.